All right, thank you everyone. Um, last talk of the day, so thank you for bearing with us. Um, I'm gonna talk with you about uh, using Envoy's new filter chain matcher API for advanced TLS routing. Uh, essentially what we're doing here at a high level is we managed to figure out a way to route traffic to different upstreams based on the TLS ciphers that were provided during the client hello. Um, so yeah, and uh, my name is Ashish Banerjee. I work at solo.io. Uh, we provide API gateway solutions, service mesh solutions, uh, obviously built on top of Envoy. So what motivated this, uh, this application? This essentially came from one of our you know, happy users. They said, everything's going great with Envoy. We'd like to migrate one of our services uh, from our existing API gateway onto Envoy. But they identified a problem during the migration process. They identified the fact that some of these services still explicitly had enabled support for certain TLS ciphers that are not natively supported within boring SSL. They've been deprecated, they've been removed. And honestly, they're not the best TLS ciphers in the world, but um, you know, when we're talking about migrating users from an existing product to a new one, um, you know, regrettably, mm, just cutting these users off because we're using a new product is not really feasible, so we had to come up with a way to support them. And so, since this was a migration effort, we uh, essentially decided upon a solution. There are many possible solutions to this problem, but the one that we specifically chose was that we wanted to route all traffic through Envoy, but we wanted to pass through TLS traffic that could not be decrypted to a separate upstream for this other upstream to handle. Um, so, how does that work at a high level? Um, now, typically, you know, on the normal request path, if we just pay attention to the lower path here, we essentially have TLS client hello, we do our hostname matching for SNI purposes, and then you know, we go through the TLS handshake process, and we, if the TLS handshake is successful, then we perform termination, we decrypt the connection, um, and we go through our standard HTTP filters and send it to our HTTP upstream. If we cannot make the connection work because there's a lack of overlap between TLS ciphers, then we just send a handshake failure back to the clients and the connection is closed from there. Now what we're essentially doing here is we're adding a third path, this uh, upper path here highlighted in red, where if we determine that native TLS termina termination cannot occur, but one of the very explicitly selected TLS ciphers for this particular service have been enabled um, and is present in the TLS client's uh, ciphers in the client hello, then we say okay, um, let's uh, select a second filter chain, do a TCP proxy to a separate uh, upstream over L4, and you know, then it's separate upstream's problem uh, that that service can do whatever it wants uh, with that traffic. Um, and obviously we're not limited to just three possible routes here. You could add as many as you want, but at least for this particular application, we only had to uh, select, we only needed three, which was handled by two filter chains. Um, yeah, so how does this work in Envoy itself? So it's not as simple as just uh, enabling the filter chain matcher to, to perform this operation. We had to do a couple you know, earlier steps in order to make this work. Um, the, the key limitation was the fact that the TLS ciphers were not explicitly provided to the filter chain matcher uh, for, for us to be able to make this decision. So we had to write a couple of custom extensions and filters to, to make this work. So the first was uh, a listener filter, uh, the TLS cipher inspector. So you know, if you're doing uh, SNI and Envoy, you need to enable the TLS inspector. This is what provides a host of important information to the uh, filter chain match or filter chain matcher object in order to select a particular upstream. It parses out important information like you know, the SNI host name, for example, but it also provides other things, useful things like ALPN and TLS version and all that other you know, helpful, useful stuff, but very critically, does not provide the, um, the TLS ciphers that the client provides. So we wrote a small extension to do this for us. It basically just does the same thing as the TLS inspector, but instead of parsing out all the other information I told you about, it parses out the TLS uh, client provided ciphers. Uh, we're not done there. Um, just because we've parsed it, we also have to figure out a way to send it to the uh, filter chain matcher. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no specific way to do this, but we just do it using the same generic way we would do everything when we have to pass information between filters. And that's essentially to instantiate a filter state object or dynamic metadata either would work, but in this case we chose a filter state because uh, it just ended up being a little bit easier to use. And then finally we step into the filter chain matcher, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on this in the next slide, but essentially what it's doing, it's doing two things. First, it's 
performing SNI matching to select the particular client certificate. <coughs> and then finally, we perform the matching on the client ciphers that are provided, and we make a decision here. We look at the client ciphers that have been provided by the clients, and we look at the ciphers that have been configured on this particular service, and we make a decision, do we go to the L7 filter chain with the HTTP connection manager and the HTTP filters and everything, or do we just proxy it over, or you know, do we do the uh, handshake failure? So what does this filter chain matcher look like? It's essentially a two-level tree. Um, you know, this, this matching API is extremely flexible and ex extremely powerful. You can do a lot of different things with it. In our particular specific case, we did a top-level tree uh, where essentially at, at the higher le highest level, we have this server name uh, input. So essentially the service server name is provided into the tree and then we match on it. So you can see, I, I know the text is a little bit small, it's envoy configuration, it's hard to get too many lines in there. But uh, at the, you know, there's a number of entries in here. There's server1.com where we have an unmatched fields, which I neglected to include. There's server3.com, which also I neglected to include, but you can see these only have just one filter chain for each one, which uses uh, the HTTP um, filter chain that we talked about previously. But then on specifically server2.com, we are actually enabling this, this advanced matching algorithm. So we're only doing this on uh, server2.com, right? What's nice about this sort of interface is the fact that um, you don't have to enable this across the board. We can only do it very explicitly on these specific services that have this feature enabled. And you know, as clients upgrade and we see traffic has stopped coming in using these old ciphers, we can slowly turn them off and you know, disable them. Um, so you can see the configuration here. Uh, you know, suppose we match server2.com. Then we add a subtree uh, in terms of matching. So let's take a look at what's going on in here. We have the cipher detection input. This is essentially the custom logic that we're using for, for matching uh, and making our selection. And I'm sure you can imagine what the, uh, the logic looks like in your head, right? You iterate through the client-provided ciphers, and then you say, okay, well, if there's one in the native terminated list, then you know, return early, just provide that to the, you know, as the output. If not, you know, see if any of the previous ciphers was um, in the pass-through list. Uh, and if so, then return that value. And if not, you know, we just go back to the original filter chain two list down here. So this filter chain list down here, filter chain two, is the one where we do either the TLS termination or the TLS handshake failure. And this uh, node over here, which is switching on the output from the node that is taking in, that is analyzing the client ciphers. That's the one that's actually getting a value and evaluating it within the Envoy YAML configuration. And it says, OK, well, I got a pass through filter chain as the result that was returned here by our custom logic. My apologies. And so what do we do? Well, then we go to filter chain three, which is the pass through filter chain over here. Um, and another thing you'll notice is that the TLS ciphers here are provided using their UN16 values. Uh, this is necessary because Boring SSL doesn't actually know what the names of these TLS ciphers are, right? Like, I could specify them by name, right? AES-128, whatever, ECDHE, whatever. But, um, you know, the, these, like, AES-128 doesn't actually exist in Boring SSL. We can't use it. So um, we just specified them by uh, their UN16 values. Okay. <coughs> so as a quick demonstration, um, basically, there are three requests that you see here, um, and I apologize, they're a little bit long just because specifying SNI and curl is a little bit, you know, weird. But um, essentially, all of these requests are exactly the same except in terms of the TLS ciphers that are being provided. So the top two cases are the ones that we're typically familiar with, right? This ECDHE AES GCM cipher here is the 49200 that we had um, in the terminating ciphers list down here. So that's 49200. And what happens when we hit that, uh, when we send that TLS cipher, Envoy says, okay, I can perform TLS termination. It performs TLS termination successfully. We d I just implemented a direct response action that says hello from Envoy, but it, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that if Envoy were not actually terminating the TLS and decrypting the request. The next one is a ChaCha20 uh, TLS cipher. Now this one is actually natively supported in Boring SSL, but we did not mention it in the list of TLS ciphers that we provided in the previous slide. So Envoy doesn't use it and it simply returns a TLS handshake failure. And then finally, uh, at the bottom, we have an example of one of our pass-through ciphers. This was 60 from the previous slide, um, AES128-256. 
And so what happens here is Envoy says, OK, I'll use the other filter chain. And what does that other filter chain do? It just creates an L4 proxy to tcpbin.com. tcpbin.com decrypts the uh, request for us. And it's, it's a TCP echo server, so it just echoes the contents of the request right back. Right? That's exactly what a HTTP request looks like. Not a response, but OK. So that's uh, basically all I wanted to demonstrate for you. You know, this filter chain matcher API is incredibly flexible and powerful. It's you know just as we've come to accept, uh, expect from you know this this incredible project. So everything, you know, is everything is extensible, right? So uh, we demonstrated basically how you could incorporate new sources of information into the matching tree. Um, basically, write your own parser, you know, put it in a filter state or a dynamic metadata object, and then parse it from the tree. Um, we can add our complex logic in there for the routing decisions. So, I mean, I told you, the algorithm itself to write is fairly simple and straightforward, but imagine doing something like that in YAML configuration, right? It would be much more complicated to do. So we just write our custom C++ logic into this extension to make the decision for us, and you know, we have the inputs, we have the outputs, and we can switch on that. And yeah, supporting this use case can promote greater adoption of Envoy because you know, this is unfortunately one of the shortcomings of Envoy, right? When we were talking about this with this customer, you know, he compared it. He's like, you know, all these other API gateway services use these TLS ciphers. So, you know, um, and, and you know, when we hear that, right, it's, um, you know, we want we want to promote Envoy. We want it to be adopted everywhere we can. So, you know, this is just our take on how we overcame this uh, this limitation. So, okay, um, that's all I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you so much uh, for your attention, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful EnvoyCon. Thanks.